That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometer. Thank you so much for logging on, tuning in, subscribing. What, you haven't subscribed? You? Hit the button, come back over. We got artists, we got authors, we got musicians, we got filmmakers, we got cosplayers. I got two homeless guys I brought in from the street because they thought they just sounded cool. You're my dollar for me. That's what I'm saying, brother. Uh, we are here right now. We're hanging with author and filmmaker, Hanging With Web Show alumnus, Jeff Carroll, man. Jeff, How you doing? For hanging with you. Amazing. Thank you, thank you. This is why you couldn't make a con. Where else are you going to see this? I mean, you can see this probably on a Friday night at Jeff's house. Right. <laughs> true, 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 true. True, true. But you got to come to make a con if you want to see it out and open. Yes. That's right. Touch and, it. And and the rest of Jeff is dressed. Yes. But he, just the mask at home. We'll call him the forever. We'll call him the forever. forever, baby. Nice. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead, man. Let's, right. let's chat. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, man. All right, so... Man, last time we talked was like two years ago. Yeah, at, at uh, Necronomicon. Necronomicon, that's right. Uh, we talked about Harlem Shakes. Yep. And, uh, and some of the other books you were working on, something like that. I saw the the book marker. Yes. You've been working. Hey, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to make it. This is a career, so you can't just get there without trying. That's you right. have to try. It is. It is. You know, we talk a lot about the passion and the drive that makes an artist work. Yes. But at the end of the day, it is work. And like anything else. That's right. So, what do you, what do you, I mean, what are you doing, man? Well, I brought, what do we I got here? This, we got Boss Ladies Planet. Yes. This is Welcome to Boss Ladies Planet. It's my last, my latest book, the last book that I finished writing. And um, we put it out, um, and we've been getting uh, good reviews from it, especially now in this post uh, Black Panther era where everybody's talking about Afrofuturism you and know, things like that. Uh, I, we, we, we just did a radio show not long ago. Right. Uh, and I know we reached out to you and you, you were really busy, but um, it's, been a, it's been a great topic. This has been an amazing time in arts and entertainment. Yes, yes. And it is, uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to go out there on a limb. YouTube, y'all can hate me if you want to, but I'm going to tell you right now, sci-fi, fantasy, the geekdom, Yes. Man, we are leading the way. I mean, you can do a top 10 movies now on just superhero sci-fi movies. We are leading the way. We have the strongest, most powerful women heroes yep. in the history of heroism. And just characters. Yeah. We have more uh, uh, di diverse African-American, Afri well, not even, just African. Right. Wakanda, <laughs> baby. We have more diverse... Uh, characters and stories, heroes and heroines, and it's the geekdom. We're bringing it. Yes. You turn on CNN and you you hear about all problems. the problems, but over here, there's unity, there's curiosity, every and there's openness. There's you know acceptance is growing. You know I think the success of Black Panther shows that there's a receptiveness that is untapped. You know and I bravo for film for, Amen. to do it. Amen. Comic books have always done it. Now we're waiting for novels in print. I, yeah. We're waiting for those sci-fi well, magazines. We have, we're not waiting. We, two years yes, ago, yes. we told you Jeff yes. is bringing it. Hey. Uh, you don't have to wait. You can go down below to the links to Amazon and find out the artists have been leading from the front. Yep. And we've been doing it a long time. Yep. And it's about time. It's great to see popular culture. It's great to see culture catch up. Yep. And finally start telling these stories. Yeah, we still got a lot of work to do in yeah. terms of societal. But it's really hard to disbelieve what you see around you um, and believe what you read about and things of that nature. Yep. So it is a job we have to do. And we've been on it. So uh, it's well, good that, and that... You know, we talked we talk the last time you were on the show. The artist is a truth teller. We're the te we're the tellers of the human story. Yes. And if we're doing our jobs right, it you know everybody th it's the politicians and it's the police and it's and it's the teachers and it's and they're all great. They're all vital, important pieces of our society. Right. But from the beginning of time, since we were camped out around the fire, 
It's the storytellers that have had to lead the way, to tell us what's out there in the dark, to tell us that there's light in the morning. That's what you're doing, man. Well, I mean, I, I always tell people I like to solve problems, so that's why I'm a science fiction writer, because I get to play out those scenarios just like any engineer would, any scientist, to see what actually will work. Sometimes I play them out before they even get to the book, but I'm playing them out even if the book is only one solution. Hey, maybe we can see how that plays out, and we won't do that in real life. Or maybe we'll mimic that in real life. Yeah. Well, and you know, so our society is, you know, we, uh, we like to think of our we know we're one humanity. Right. We know we're one society. But we segment ourselves so often. Yes. One of the things that I've enjoyed about reading your work mm. has been that we have a lot of fun uh, in the arts community, and they have a very serious time in society as a whole with those segments. Uh, you know, I, I will be the first one to say that I have on occasion mimicked a southern accent. I have also mimicked an urban accent. We have a lot of fun. You didn't do Jamaican accent? Come on, I do Jamaica. Of course I do. What about I, go to, I, go to, I go to boarding school, my roommate. He from the Bahamas, man. Okay. We got it all. There you go. What about, what's another good accent? Uh, um, um, uh, Italian, um, Chinese accent, Asian accent? I get in trouble for the Asian accent. Right, because it seems sounds it seems, real it, it, it is. To me. Look, here's the thing. We all have our quirks. Right, right. I, I, one of these days, I will be famous enough so that somebody will do me. Yes. I promise you I will not be offended. Yeah, the because southern, it's just for the fun. southern cool guy. I do a little southern thing, yeah. right? Uh, I do a little Jersey, you know, or New York, because, you know... Yeah, New York, you got to do New York. 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 Everybody, Brooklyn. Does, Brooklyn. everybody does New York, okay? Because if you don't do New York, what are you even in the States for? There aren't any other states. There's just New York. Okay, what about Russian? All right, I just I just worked on this. I uh, Let's hear it. We watch uh, out there in pop culture that we watch Orphan Black. Okay. One of my favorite characters is uh, Tatiana Maslana's uh, The Clone Club is the Russian sister. And so okay. we're doing it. All I can tell you is I don't know where to find the mangoes. <laughs> there are some very good mangoes. I want the mangoes. Uh, what? Okay, you're working on a film, man. Yes. This Give is, it to me, baby. What is, is it? What it, is this from? Yeah, this is the the mask that the killer in my story you got uh, a wears. Killer wearing a star. Yeah, he's yeah. wearing a mask. Um, his backstory is in one of my books. Okay. I wrote this story maybe seven years ago called Interview with a Monster. And it was a story of a, a barnyard boxer during the time of slavery that wow. won his freedom. And he was fighting Native Americans, uh, Europeans, white folks. And in my story, I make it like uh, WWF, you know, and Mexican mask uh, wrestling. But oh, in, real life, in real life, it was bare knuckle boxes. Yeah. And there was a, couple, a, a bunch of fighters that they fought all over the world. And they had started off as slaves and they won their freedom. But this one, is, his name is Baba, the African King. And um, in the story, which is the backstory for the movie, he's wrongfully accused of raping the uh, slave owner, the plantation owner's uh, daughter. Ooh. And um, he's burned and, and, and buried. In my movie, I say that the cemetery that he was buried in was unearthed by Hurricane Irma. And it, the cemetery was never known it was there, so it's in a park in South Florida. So once the hurricane knocked trees over and they found that there were tombstones there, they sent some college kids as an assignment for Pledge Week to excavate the cemetery. As one does. There you go. If, and, um, if there's a hurricane and unearths a, 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 a haunted cemetery, the first people that are going to be there are college are students. college kids. So they disrupt his prison tomb, and Baba goes loose. And I wanted you don't to mess do it. with Baba. I wanted to do it. He because, did that on purpose. You yeah, know he did yeah. that. We're at a comic book convention, horror convention. You're always going to see Freddy Krueger, Jason. If you get lucky, you'll see a Mike. Mike Myers sighting. But in horror, you'll see Mike. But you never see any black characters. You'll see Leatherface. I gotta, I, yeah, I was gonna ask you about, you know, the, the, the 
Aryan looking dude's got to be careful. You can't ask the question. You got to wait till he goes with it. Right, right, right. That's right. How come, I was going to say until now, how come none of the brothers ever go crazy? Right. And I wanted I mean, to show. Say, in every horror movie, you're right. In every horror movie, white guy always goes nuts. Yeah. He's killing people. He's doing all kinds of things. Brother never goes crazy. I mean, we had Candyman. Eddie Murphy Man. had it right. The brother just walks in and goes, I'm leaving. Right. And we had Candyman. And Candyman was a regular guy, regular black guy with a trench coat and a hook. And he didn't get nothing cool. Right, and that's, that can be anybody. You're not even. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know to, that guy. I wanted to give um, people of color a killer that they could cosplay. And so these masks are 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 not out yet. When the movie comes out, get ready. Get ready. You get a Baba's mask. Yep, up. Yep. Where are you going from here, man? Well, I have a few things. Um, as an author, I'm going to the American Book Expo in awesome. New York City. Yes. And I, I have no idea. I'm covering it for uh, BlackSciFi.com. Awesome. So I'm going to cover all of We're the sci-fi books. We're going to drop those links down have. below so you can find Jeff online. Uh, you're going to be able to find his books. You're going to be able to find uh, BlackSciFi.com. Yep. You're going to be able to find all of that stuff. I got two nice panels uh, this summer. Actually. Uh, a convention and two panels. I'm going to a convention of black sci-fi writers in Atlanta called Black Tasticon. Blacktasticon. Yes. And of course, I'm going to be on South Beach and at I the Black it, Film Festival. I just find irony in the fact that Black Tasticon is in Atlanta. Right? Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yep. We have come a long way, baby. Yes. And um, in July. It's not just black folks in Atlanta. Don't take it that no, way. No, no. This is black geeks in Atlanta. Yes. Um, this is two subcultures from the past. Yep, meeting, and, and, and that's what Georgia does. So in July, of course, I'm going to be doing a panel, my monster panel at um, Supercon. Supercon. Oh, and, man, that's awesome. Yes, and then I have um, a panel on writing Afrofuturism, creating worlds like Wakanda at a convention called WakandaCon. Wakanda. It's in Chicago. Is it Wakanda Con already? Yes. Man, it's only been like six weeks. Hey, they got Middle Earth cons. So, That's true. So you're going to have that. Con. You have all Which, these zombie cons. Wow. Oh. Are you going back to Necro? Of course. Um, actually, this year at Necro, I think they gave my monster panel a panel. So I will awesome. be presenting my own panel at Necro. But I go to all the, you know, that's my home base. Yeah. So that's my sci-fi family. We all want to shout Florida. out yeah. to the, the, the planners and Morris and the whole team at Necronomicon. Yeah. When, when we were all slogging the first book, just looking for someone to hang out with, even if it was just us, yeah. Necronomicon opened the doors, let us in. and man, Somebody who could tell us the difference between Star Wars and Star Trek. You had to go, you had to, go to Necro. That's right, And those man. are good people. That's right. Uh, she's gonna make a shut up. Huh? We, we we see each other like every two years. We're chatting here. Fine, we'll say thanks. We're gonna say thank you to our friends at Something Unique Magazine out of St. Louis, at Famous Faces and Funnies right over in Melbourne, Florida. The best comic book shop, man. Okay. It's like three huge rooms. In Melbourne, Melbourne is a gaming room. Yeah, okay. in Melbourne, Florida. If you ever get by there, Rick Shea over there, man, they got everything you need for your geek con. May I have to do a signing? There you go, Rick Shea. Jeff Carroll, man, awesome signing. Krypton Radio, we just started the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. We do it once a week from 7 p.m. on okay. Krypton Radio. Okay. It's fantastic. We can talk about all the really just cool shit we love. Well, I know I missed talking to you about Black Panther, yep. but there's going to be something else that comes up. I'm, I'm, I'm more than available because Black Panther was a gift that keeps on giving in it the is. sense that it was a Trojan horse of black sci-fi and diversity and it showed us that it, black sci-fi isn't just anti-others it's inclusive and people can get into it all we watch that was godzilla it. that's yes. asian sci-fi that's it you know this is the great thing about this community is you know out there in the world everybody kind of thinks they have to be a part of their club right once you're a part of this club we don't care if it's black, yellow, green, tall, short, male, female. You can't tell if it's male or female right. most of the time. It, see some of the cosplays out here? I ain't judging. Hey. I'm just saying, right? So, but we, we love what we do. Krypton Radio, he's going to be over there. Off the Chain Radio with Yvonne Mason. Author Yvonne Mason was one of the first authors to jump on board and sponsor the show. Okay. And she has, she's got a radio show. She talks to other authors. want to hook you up with her one of these okay. days, man. She's awesome. 
We want to thank Space Coast Comics, Jake Estrada and David Grace, Asylum Convention Entertainment Services. They're the ones that work with Fan Expo to get us here on the floor so we can be these amazing creative artists. And uh, that's it, man. We're gonna, we're gonna just, you know, let you guys go. Remember, we've been hanging with author and filmmaker now, Jeff Carroll. The Death Pledge, coming the out. The Death Pledge. Yep, that's the name of it, The, the Death, Death Pledge. Pledge. If you have, you've got, we have got a diverse base of heroes now. If you've been looking for diversity in villains, Baba. You need to get one of those masks, man. Jeff, thank you so much for hanging with us. Thank Everybody you. else, remember, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Uh. <laughs>